Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. You know, I had somebody reach out to me last week and they said, you know what? I want to write an offer on this house and it's lower than the asking price, but I can't find an agent that'll write the offer. They're all telling me, well, the market's doing pretty well. Nobody's going to accept that offer. My short answer is, well, then find another agent. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get that offer accepted, but agents need to write the offer that you want to write. Now, if they're asking five hundred thousand, you ask me to write an offer for two fifty. I'll be honest with you, I don't think you're going to get that. <clears throat> but if you're close, I mean, why not? Um, but what I want to encourage people to do: everybody wants a bargain, uh, but they want it without looking at really what's going on in the market. So they look at an asking price and they go, "Well, I think overall, all prices are." Pr Houses are priced too much, so I'm going to offer 20% off of a house no matter what I see. Well, look, sometimes people price houses low on purpose to get multiple offers. So you kind of have to know the market. You have to know where we're at. And, I, you know, the first thing you need to start with is inventory. So let's take a look at a zip code here, 85226 in Chandler. And what I'm looking at here is I'm seeing a number of listings here, which are 27. And last year they were almost at 40. Well, right off the bat, you know in this zip code that there's fewer homes for sale today than there was last year. Okay, so what happened last year? Well, January was kind of slow last year. Okay, uh, but I have fewer listings this year, so I don't really see people in a bind where they have to lower their prices. But let me take a look at what's actually out there. So you and your agent, you pull up what's out there. And in this particular zip code, the first thing it's there is a mobile home. But you're going to look at the 27 houses. <clears throat> you're going to look at the home you want. Then you have to compare. So here's one for 505. It's three-bedroom, two-bath, 1,600 square feet, built by Fulton Homes. I don't see how many days on the market it is. Let me check this out. Now, I'm not going to give you any advice on any particular house here because I really don't feel like getting yelled at. So it's only four days on market. So when you look at a home and you see that it's on the market less than a week, the odds of you coming in and swooping in and getting it way below the list price are not in your favor. May the odds always be in your favor. They're not the first week. If you list your home and it's only been on the market for a few days, somebody offers you below list, that's the first thing that comes out of your mouth. Well, We'll kind of hang on to the offer, but to be honest with you, we've got people coming to look at it. It's only been on the market less than a week. Uh, we don't feel we're in a position where we need to take a lower price. Now, if it's on the market for 45 days, then by all means, by all means, offer them a lower price because time is not on the seller's side. So sellers, time on market kills you. And buyers are sophisticated. They have access to data now. They can see it. They understand it. What a lot of buyers don't see and a lot of sellers don't see is they don't really drill in to see what's really going on overall in the market. I was watching a football game yesterday and one of my friends said, so how's the real estate market? I hear interest rates are just going to plummet this year. And I thought, well, we don't know. <laughs> so nobody knows. And everybody hears what their neighbor tells them or what they tell them at the water cooler. But you need to have your own information. So you need to look at the house. You need to compare it to other homes of the same size. Does it have a pool? What's the flooring like? What's the kitchen like? What are the fixtures? How old is the roof? How old is the AC? All of these things need to be considered when you're writing an offer. Now, if you determine that the house is priced above other comparables and it's only been on the market for a week, well, you might as well just sit in your hands and wait. Nobody else is going to purchase it if it's overpriced above the comps in the neighborhood. Now, somebody might come in, swoop it out that doesn't know the market, but you know that doesn't mean you have to have to pay that price. So you kind of also have to look at the stats on the neighborhood as well, something like this that we can get off the Cromford report like the listing success rate currently, and this is old information, like maybe a couple weeks old, is 87.5%. That's actually not a huge listing success rate, but they're getting 97.6% of their asking price. So if you want to come in 10%, then you're way below what people are getting. 
So you're going to have to have a pretty good reason for offering somebody 10% off their asking price when everybody's already getting 97.6% of their asking price. Last year, they were getting 98.9. Sounds like a radio station, doesn't it? The other thing that you need to look at are there are a lot of uh, price changes per week in this market. And then there is, and there always is in January. So you need to also take a look on your own. And I recommend going to Zillow uh, just because you don't have access to what I have on the MLS. But look at this. Zillow says 27 results right there, just like what we saw on the MLS. So you can cruise through here, look at the homes, compare the prices, compare the sizes, take a look at the pictures, take a look at the condition of the home, and you can help make a decision on what you want to offer. Now, here's what I also caution you not to do. Don't look at your agent and say, well, what should I offer? Your agent's not buying the house. And if your agent's wrong, you're going to blame the agent. <clears throat> not, not their fault. They're kind of spitballing just like you. So you're both in this together. It's the agent's job to facil facilitate the transaction and manage you through the minefield of regulations when it comes to buying a home. It's not the agent's job to tell you what price you should offer. That's You're the one writing the check. So I would tell you as an agent, well, here's the stats. We went over. We saw that their inventory is half of what it was last year. We're seeing that people are getting 97% of uh, their asking price. However, this one looks like if we were to compare it, that it appears to be about $10,000 higher than homes that are comparable. Um, so uh, what do you think? Where would you like to come in? So instead of 500, you might want to come in at 490. Uh, you might say, well, let's start at 480. Super. Let's write the offer for 480. Write the offer. The other agent sends it back rejected. Well, don't be upset. Some sellers just go, nope, that's insulting. This is where the agent needs to call them back and go, hey, don't reject it. You know, a, a, an offer is still an invitation to negotiate, so let's talk. Um, do you think, think there's a price somewhere in there where your seller is willing to uh, entertain? Get the conversation going. And he'll go, well, what about your buyers? Do you think there's a price they're willing to entertain? Yeah, I think we've got wiggle room. I'm not going to tell you how much, but – Let's go back and forth and see if we can find an agreement. So you're the one that has the asking price. Tell me what works for your client. So get with your client, find out with them, and then, and then get back to me. How willing are they to come up to meet us or go down to meet us is what I meant to say. He's going to say how willing are you to go up. So that's how the conversation goes. You wait. Don't ever be in a hurry. Now, if the house has been on the market for 45 days, you know, fold your arms and wait it out. Because nobody gets their asking price after 45 days. Nobody. Unless they listed it like, I don't know, Thanksgiving Day and nobody looked at it over the holidays. Now, it's always price. If you're listing your house and you, nobody's offering you anything, it's, it's because of price. It's nothing else. If you don't believe me, mark it down to 250 and see how fast it sells. It's always price. Oh, nope, I'm waiting for that one buyer. Well, you could wait a long time. But the longer you're waiting the less likely you are to get your asking price. People are going to go, I've been on the market for 90 days. Cool. I'm going to swoop in and offer them this. You set the price. You let the agent know what you would like to offer. And then you let the agent know what your wiggle room is because that agent has a fiduciary duty not to let anybody else know that. You can say, well, let's write for 480. I'm willing to go up to 489. Cool. Okay. So the agent's in big trouble if he says, well, you know, my client's willing to come up to 489. That, uh, that's a whole new video. <laughs> so make sure you've got all the tools that you need. Make sure that when you look at the home that you want, that you know the market. Too many people go in just with the attitude of, I don't care what they're asking. I just want to get it for less. Well, if you started doing some digging, you might discover that, well, they actually priced this pretty good. And then you call the agent. Well, yeah, we had several people looking at it. We're anticipating uh, two offers over the next day. So, you know, you can dig in as hard as you want, but you may not get it. Whether or not the market's going to go up in the long term or down in the long term is way beyond an agent's ability to guess. 
So you can't ask him that either. Where do you think the price is going to be in a couple of years? Well, he might tell you something, but they won't know. I know somebody, I, I actually heard the conversation. The agent goes, congratulations, you've already got $40,000 equity in this home. And by next year, you're going to have eighty to 100000 equity. Way to go. Well, guess what? The market crashed. I, I doubt she's still selling real estate. So agents do not know and can only guess on what prices are going to be next year. But you can be the expert in your market when you're out looking for a home. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, send me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.